Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Table Talk with Brenda Perryman. I'm Brenda Perryman, and I welcome you. This is a cold day, but our hearts are warm, and I'd like my co-hosts to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Cheryl Ajmu, owner of the Ajmu Group. We produce the Multicultural Media Luncheon during the Detroit Auto Show. Hi, I'm Dr. Rose Moulton, clinical psychologist, author, and speaker. Good afternoon. I'm attorney Tiffany McEvans and also adjunct professor at Thomas M. Cooley Law School. Happy New Year, ladies. Happy, happy New, New Year. Year. This is our first show of the year, and I'm so happy to be with these esteemed ladies. And I'd like to tell you that before I do on this day that we're expecting a call in from Taj from SWV United. If she, she's in a fitting now because they're going to be part of the Trumpet Awards mm. tomorrow evening when they do the tribute to Gamble and Huff. So I'm really, really excited about that. She's a friend of mine and she, she'd be sneaking away and doing a favor for us. But is as our tradition is, we are going to start with On This Day by Ken Coleman and talk about something that happened that was important in Detroit's African American history on this day. And on this day in 1967, which I remember and I guess you all don't, uh, Aretha, Franklin, Aretha Franklin records, I never loved a man the way I love you. You all know that song, though, don't you? Yes, we okay. do. Okay. That That's song. how good music just lives, <laughs> which will become a hit title track from her first album for Atlantic Records. She joined the newly expanded record label after several years at Columbia under the tutelage of the great music producer John Hammond. Mm -hmm. And also in 1982, we got to talk about divas, Diana Ross, the Motown legend, performs the national anthem just ahead of the second coldest Super Bowl, because I think <laughs> next week's is going to be the coldest yeah, really. Super Bowl that yeah. was held at the Pontiac Silverdome. The game pitted San Francisco 49ers versus the Cincinnati Bengals. And I just can't imagine going to a football game in this kind Not of weather, can it's you? Cold. It's cold. I know. It's really, really cold. Well, we have so much to talk about, so much. We're going to do some national, and we're going to do some state, but then we're going to get into some entertainment and some social issues. Some, a lot's going on out there. So first, we want to talk about this gentleman. I, I can't even call him a gentleman. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I'm editorializing. He's from Florida, and he's running for a public office in Florida, and he's a black man, and he tweeted that, the president should be hung. Mm. Did any of you hear about that? Absolutely. Yes, we did. What do you think? Well, it's even um, causing a lot of GOP members yeah. to yeah. ask for him to step out of the race. I think the governor of Florida. Yeah, you know, and, he, yeah. and he said the governor doesn't, he doesn't take orders from the governor. <laughs> no I'm staying. the boss of him, exactly. I guess he's like singing that song from Dream Girls, and I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> it's hilarious. I think they're just blatantly disrespectful. I mean, people should have a respect for the presidency mm -hmm. office, and I think it's gotten out of control. You know, I don't know if there's something that they can do to start penalizing people for disrespecting, you know, that office. But there's a level of respect that, regardless of how you feel about him as a person, it's just respect for that office. And I think that, you know a lot of the Republicans, I won't say all of them, but they, you know, are very disrespectful of that. Well, that started when he first got into office, mm -hmm. even when he was giving the State of the Union address. Yes. We all when remember the man that moment. Out. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think anything ever happened to that guy. I don't know. Did anything ever happen to well, him? Well, no. He's no. not in office right now, oh. but okay. that's nothing. Mm -hmm. He should have been yanked out of office right away. Yes. I mean, because I've never seen yeah. this happen in wow. my lifetime. At least yanked out of that room at that moment. Right. <laughs> right. Escorted out. Just right. like you would be at a concert mm -hmm. or something. Or, or like when Beyonce, that guy, you know, hit her on the butt. You know, he, they, they took him out of there, you know. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. And the thing about this guy is the social... Not social service, the secret service. Secret. Yeah, they, yeah. Showed up. they showed up, mm -hmm. but they didn't do anything about it. I mean, it seems like well, they, they could. can't really. Because yeah. it said it wasn't any immediate danger. Yes. 
they investigated it and from what they from what i read he just retweeted something someone tweeted and said he agreed yes somebody mm -hmm. uh tweeted agreed yeah just the word agreed and this has never happened to a president i don't even think this would happen to a female president well understand now we live in a day and age of social media so there are a lot of things that come out or that we know it wasn't that it wasn't happening it wasn't just as vocal or it wasn't just as publicized because now we have different social media sites the twitter the facebook the internet so things that happen nowadays are vastly seen by the majority because of all the social network that is really really unfortunate i wish that they could do something about it and this man has capitalized on this because he has twice as many followers now i think that was probably one of the reasons he did this people know if they can stir up the pot they can get a lot of free publicity right free pr well <laughs> should i start twerking on you um, should brenda get some <laughs> I could, maybe not um, <laughs> <laughs> tiffany, i'm for it maybe not I vote yes. tiffany, you, <laughs> tiffany has seen some of my dances but on the serious side of it uh this was really disruptive mm -hmm. it, it was yeah. really a wrong thing to do and also to go on with the news there's a woman, Antoinette Tufts. Mm. She has a new book out. And she was the lady down in Georgia who was, she was the school bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. And a gentleman, a young man came into the school with an AK-47 and he was threatening to shoot, out the pla shoot up the place. And uh, she came out and talked him down. Mm -hmm. I remember that. What do you think? So brave, is that her there? Yes, that's her. Uh, brave soul. Brave, brave soul. soul. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that what was more amazing about the story was that it was reported that she had contemplated suicide, suicide. Yes. prior suicide. to that. So yes. that was just something that was very interesting mm -hmm. to me. Yes, she had contemplated suicide. Her husband had left her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, her, she has a son that he's really, really uh, disabled. And he has a daughter. She has a daughter. Plus, she was working three jobs. Mm. Yeah. And did any of you get a chance to see her on any of the talk shows this morning, this week? Oh, no. I didn't at all. No. She really, really looks good. She hasn't gone back to work yet. Mm -hmm. She hasn't gone back to work, and she has a new book. And the book is, oh, I had, had it right here. It's right on here. Yours. Prepared for a Purpose. Mm-hmm. That's the name of the book. Now, did any of you, when this happened or when you read about this happening, did you ever think about what you would do? You know, I think just human instinct will kick in depending on the situation. Um, and she was especially in the school with kids. I think as women, regardless if you're a mother or not, you have that, that mothering instinct mm -hmm. and you want to protect the babies. It's no different than... Um, and I'm sure you guys can relate to this. If you're in a car and you come to a sudden stop, if there's someone next to you or not, yes. you're automatically putting your arm. <laughs> I, I put it out. Yeah, you put, you put the arm out. <laughs> yeah. And I remember my mother doing yes, that. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so it's just instinct. It's mm -hmm. instinct. And you wouldn't necessarily, I, I, I'm sure after it was all over, she probably realized the, the you know, how close she the was grab. to death, yeah. Um, yeah. which the irony of her being mm -hmm. suicidal just a year prior to that. But, um, I think instinct will kick in. I think all of us here would have done the same thing to protect babies. Well, I know I was real protective of my students. I really, but you know, when Tiffany was my student, she was a boss. <laughs> she, <I> was. <laughs> she was. She, she was. She <laughs> was. Who are you talking about? No, no, no. This one. <laughs> She, really? She was a it's little boss. Believe, I mean, she was a really short girl, but she was kind of bossy. <laughs> she was bossy. She's been bossy for quite a long time. <laughs> Haven't you, Tiff? This is true. You even had a theme song for me, do you remember? Yes, she's bossy. I'm bossy. <laughs> That's the Taurus in her. Yes, she, <laughs> she's kind of bossy, but I always think about, you do want to protect the children. Mm -hmm. You have to. And I remember when we go on field trips or anything, I was always the first one out the door. I used to have a joke, though, when I first started teaching and I was on the second or third floor at Highland Park High, I said, uh, th when we had windows, I said, uh, 
Now, if something happens, you lower me down first so that I could <laughs> dictate from the ground, you know, <laughs> give directions from the ground, you know, so that, that was, was your disaster plan. <laughs> yes, that was my disaster plan for the students. But you, you never know how these things kick in. Yeah. Have yeah. any of you ever done something that you didn't think you could do, but the time came? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Can you give me an example? I can remember, actually, it was a while ago, but our senior trip in Acapulco, we were all out, and we had uh, chaperones that were there, but we were all out at a, a night establishment, seniors, and there was one young lady that had gone on the trip with us, and there were two men that had gotten into a fight, and they hit her mm -hmm. and knocked her unconscious. Oh, oh my gosh. And I don't know what happened. At the time, I was working at a, a daycare center, so we had all gone through the CPR training and things like that, but it just kicked in. So mm -hmm. I, I made sure I'm like, we got to get her on a hard surface and we got to get her here and let me check all our vitals. And, and everybody was looking at me like, who mm -hmm. is she? Like, what, what just happened? She was a <laughs> and it, it was just crazy because afterwards, once we got her stable and got her to the hospital, I stopped and broke down crying because it like everything kicked in. But in the instant that it happened, the training and the things that I had learned mm -hmm. was the only thing that mm -hmm. I was concerned with mm -hmm. and thinking about how to help her in that situation. So I, mm -hmm. Once reality set in, it was just like, whoa, did that just happen? Yeah, but absolutely. at the time, you don't really think about it. You just do. You just go. Don't you call that rising to the occasion? Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Absolutely. Yeah. And then things, if you have children, I know Rose and I have children. If you have children, you're always there to protect them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, you don't care what you have to do. Isn't that right, Dr. Moe? Well, that is so true. And when you hear some of these stories on TVs about children who's, who have been abused by others, mm -hmm. be it sexual abuse or what have you, oh. you know, like they say, hell have no fury. Right. I, you can definitely relate to parents who take the law into their own hands because mm -hmm. you're a primary purpose as a parent is to protect your child. And mm -hmm. it's like that instinct will kick in and... You just better watch out. <laughs> and it was amazing even to some of the things that she stated to him was that, you know, that he did have a reason to mm -hmm. live and that she cared for him and made him feel wanted and important. Probably some of the nurturing things that he had missed out on and needed to hear. She she went yeah. into that nurturing mother yeah. type of mode. Mm -hmm. Right. That was just wonderful. Phenomenal. Nice. So you always wonder, you always wonder, and she was a bookkeeper in the school. She wasn't the principal or anything right. like mm -hmm. that, but any adult, responsible adult can rise to the mm -hmm. occasion because I don't care what job you have in a school, you fall in love with those kids. Mm -hmm. You really, really do. I could tell you that. Even people who have come to mentor or do special projects at at the school from time to time, they fall in love with the kids or they'll ask about certain kids and stuff like that. So um, Cheryl brought this one to my attention even though I had read about it. Cheryl, why don't you talk about it? Um, well, in a nutshell, this uh, gentleman was jailed for overpaying in child support and spending too much time with his <laughs> son, which was just so ridiculous to me when, you know, I know of uh, uh, friends, you know, who have, you know, fathers that are not there, they're not paying, paying child support. So it just seemed like a very odd story to me. Well, they yeah. said he was sentenced to 180 days in jail for paying too much child support and seeing his 11-year-old son too much. I don't know. You know and that was legal, really, from a legal standpoint? And that was really what happened. Mm -hmm. That's the <laughs> amazing part of it. It's how can that it was happen? not misreported or mm -hmm. normally it doesn't happen that way and this just to go to say it was not in Michigan but it was a true story because when I first saw it on the news I, I had to go back and do some more research because I was <laughs> thinking like uh -oh. maybe someone got something yeah. wrong that mm -hmm. this couldn't be the situation and it truly was the account of what happened he had overpaid so is it the way the laws are written it, laws are different in different states mm -hmm. but even mm -hmm. still you still have the decision maker, the, the judge, who should have, in my opinion, mm. done a better job. Mm -hmm. And I think that she truly dropped the ball in that situation. Is he still in jail? I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, well, you think about the kind of message that this sends. Here's a man who did the right thing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's one-sided. Um, I do family law, even here in Michigan, and sometimes 
my family law cases are much more stressful, and I just told somebody that's leaving court this morning, are more stressful than like my homicide cases because mm -hmm. emotions and things are involved. And I can recall a couple years ago, there was a gentleman who contacted me and he had show cause, which means there was a, an order in place and the mother in this particular case was not abiding by the order. And he had show caused her six times. He had brought her back and they basically did nothing. Had the roles been reversed, and you can agree to disagree, or you yeah. can whatever, mm -hmm. he would have been found in contempt. And yeah. it was very disheartening for me that because he was there on his own and he was being a father and abiding by these things, that he nothing was being done mm -hmm. on his behalf. So, it, you know, call it whatever you want to, but I personally do feel that there are a lot of times where men are shortchanged or not provided the resources that they should when it comes to family law cases. Mm -hmm. And do you think that has to do with mm -hmm. if the man is affluent? Because you look at a lot of these celebrities who are getting custody left and right of their children, the male celebrities, mm -hmm. left and right, and it's like, un that's just Laws aren't the same though. for mm -hmm. celebrities. If you, <laughs> I mean, don't get me started on Justin Bieber. <laughs> so okay, I know, I know. It, it wow. appears that they have a, a different book. You yeah. know, that they go by when yeah, you're Yeah, it appears that way. It appears that way. That's so unfair. Completely. Yeah. And like I know that men do are judged before the case is even laid down there. It's like men get at the bottom half of the stick. And I'm not saying it does not happen, but nine times out of ten, it's harder for the male when it comes to family law cases. And Ironically, majority of my clients when it comes to family law cases are men because you, me personally, when I see a man who is doing what he's supposed to do or trying to do what he's supposed to do, it angers me. It really bothers me mm -hmm. that people would, you know, give someone a hard time when they're trying to do what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do, take care of their child. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just a pet peeve for me. Would you tell our audience exactly what a family law attorney takes care of? Um, anything from uh, divorces to child custody, child support, guardianship cases, um, any, all of those avenues we deal with. Mm, okay. <laughs> Interesting. I, I, a lot of times people try and work it out and there's such a thing as a do-it-yourself divorce. Do you right. recommend, what do you think about that? Well, it just depends because a lot of times I've had clients come to me where they just are ready to be divorced and they understand. So they, they'll ask, do we have to get two attorneys? And you don't. Mm -hmm. If you understand, especially if you have children and you understand, okay, we tried, it didn't work, but it's not about us at this point in time. It's about how can we coexist peacefully for our children. And sometimes they get it. Most times they, they don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. And you know, it's, there are times where it's like, well, I want the Corvette. Well, where's the Corvette? It's in the shop. It's been there for 10 years. Why do you want it? <laughs> exactly. So, so it, it gets to go, you know, a, a lot of bickering and back and forth, but it, it is truly about the children and how to make this transition and process easy for the kids. And once you can get someone to understand that, it makes my job a lot easier, but that doesn't happen most times. Mm -hmm. And I even tell all my clients, even when you get an order from the court, abide by the court's order, but you shouldn't have to dictate and run your life by a piece of paper. If it's the weekend, and this is not your weekend, but you have something going on, you, you should be able to get on the phone and communicate and say, right. hey, I mm -hmm. want to come pick our daughter up so we can go and do X, Y, and Z. And that's the point where we try to get um, the families to, but it doesn't always happen off mm -hmm. that but sometimes it does and when it does it's a really good thing yeah wow that is yeah. great that's great i believe we have taj from swv mm -hmm. she's going to be on the line in just a moment she's oh no uh she's she's calling in i know she's calling in right now she she should be calling in in a moment she, Oh, not her yet? Difficulty. Okay. <laughs> She'll be calling in in just a moment. She just uh, texted me. Well, one thing about it is I think having a lawyer makes it a lot easier. Sometimes, do you feel that people should move out of the house? It depends on the situation. You know, I had a woman, she was in her 50s, tell me that in her opinion, the worst thing that parents can do is stay in the marriage for the child or for the children. And a lot of people do that. Well, we're going to wait until they graduate. Or, and she said, because 
you know, adults, and I agree with this statement, adults do not give children the credit that they That's should get so because true. kids see, hear, and understand so much more than adults give them credit for. Mm -hmm. And she said, my mom made that decision to stay until her and her brother you know, graduated and moved on to college, and she said it was miserable for everyone in the house. Okay, because everybody. She was That's miserable. Thanks, yeah. Tiffany. We have Taj from SWV on the line. Good afternoon, Taj. Hey, everybody. Good afternoon. Hi. 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 We have Cheryl, we have Dr. Rose, and we have um, attorney Tiffany McEvans, and we're all excited to hear from you and want to know how the weather is in Atlanta first. <laughs> It is freezing. <laughs> <laughs> and we it have a beautiful cold. picture of you on the screen, you and Eddie on the screen. Okay. How's he doing? He is wonderful. The boys are great. We can't complain. Can't complain. Awesome. Well, first, I'd like to thank you. I know you were in the mid middle of a fitting and everything, but we really, really wanted to talk to you, and I've watched the show. Has anyone else watched the show as yeah, yet? congratulations. I watched it last, last night. night. Thank you. <laughs> exactly. thank you. Congratulations on that. Yeah, we actually didn't see it. We were on a flight coming back from L.A. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how does it feel to be back doing a reality show? Because didn't you have one before? Yes, I, I did a I married follow with my family. I did Survivor and now this. Wow. I'm becoming a reality veteran. <laughs> <laughs> but what makes this show different from all the other reality shows? Well, of course, the other shows are based solely on my experiences. This one is the group and everything that we've been through. We have 22 years of experience to talk about, so. There's, a, there's more than just six episodes worth of info to put in there. Right, right. Questions, ladies? So how, how does it feel being reunited with the girls? Because, you know, based on the show, you guys broke up because of differences in personalities. How is that, mm -hmm. being back with them? Well, ironically, the title is a little um, misleading, reunited. We've been back together since 2005. Okay. Oh. The reuniting is, it's already happened. We done reunited, cussed each other out. <laughs> 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 Broke up again, yeah, came back together. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's cool, and, and we deal with those issues in the show. We, we actually see a therapist, we, um, we, we, and to not give away all of the show, yes. part of the issues are still being resolved in the, uh, the next coming episode. Wow. So you said you see a therapist, the group? Mm -hmm. on the show. We see a therapist. So it gives mm -hmm. ugly. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Well, we can't wait because it comes on here Thursday nights on the Wii channel yeah. mm -hmm. and everything. How, so tell me, how much filming do they do? I mean, oh do God. they film Thank you me. all, all day? Or? I'm glad you asked that because people, they, they sit on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook, <laughs> and they criticize everything they see. Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Again, we've been in this game for 22 years. Mm -hmm. We filmed just about everything that happened in our lives for about six months. It's impossible to put everything in one hour Absolutely. in six yeah. episodes. Yeah. It's impossible. So, yeah, they, they filmed continuously. It was, it was to a point where I couldn't get undressed. Uh -huh. like, yeah. <laughs> How soon did you get used to it? Because I've heard other reality stars um, indicate after a couple weeks or so, you forget the cameras are there. Yeah, well, I think it's for us, we kind of were used to it from day one because, again, we shot videos, we yeah. shot television shows, we shot uh, um, interviews, so cam we're used to cameras. That mm -hmm. wasn't the problem. It was uh, the, the dialogue between us that was the mm. issue because we never talked about our issues. We just ignored each other. Wow. Oh, wow. So when you got back together in 2005, who broke the ice? How did that happen? Um... I think it was Teddy Riley, honestly. Um, mm. He was trying to put together a, a uh, old school New Jack, New Jack Queen tour. And um, he reached out to, I believe it was Lily. And Lily reached out to Coco, and they reached out to me. I had just had my son. I was nursing, <laughs> just no time for nothing. But yeah, but uh, they reached out, and we all decided, let's give it one more shot. Mm. Awesome. So I know you guys are on tour. Um, Music-wise, are you going to be putting out a new CD, or what are your plans for that? We are. We we all we uh, released an album last year, and um, it had moderate success. We're hoping that that this show will reignite the um, the buzz on the album, and we'll be working on a new one soon. 
Okay. Well, Cheryl, who just asked you that question, she's from Memphis, Tennessee. Mm -hmm. you, right now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's, being, she's being very modest, but tell them how you felt about SWV, Cheryl. You guys are my favorite, favorite group. I think I, you know, I think when we came out, I think we didn't have CDs yet. It was just tapes. So I had gone through like <laughs> seven or eight, just playing the same thing over and over and over and over. So That's yeah. It's so funny when people do that. I had my tape. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Rewind. That's funny yeah. because in high school, I did my, we had to do an English project, and that was my project. I, I remade a video. I'm so into you. I, mean, I, I thought I was a champ. <laughs> we, we did, I did. That was my English project. <laughs> you all. Do you still have it? I do. It's on tape. I'm going to have to find uh -oh. it on, on VHS. You have to upload, that is. Uh, you have to upload now. it. Oh, please do. Please do. That's right. I had, it was three of us, too. I'm like, look, I, we, had, we performed and we practiced in the basement. It was serious. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you all? Now, you all are from New York, right? Yes, Brooklyn and the Bronx. Mm. Oh, I love it. Look it down. Look it down. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> and so, how were you in school together? What? How did you all no, meet? We all uh, kind of grew up in the same areas. Kogo actually lived in Brooklyn first, and um, uh, we all had mutual friends in Brooklyn, and we hung out together when we were like twelve and thirteen. And um, her, she, Coco had family in the Bronx. So when her mom and her moved from Brooklyn to the Bronx. Uh, she and Lily were together more often, and they had grown up together as well because, of course, they all, our, their families lived in the same area in Brooklyn, I mean, in the Bronx. So um, when Lily decided she wanted to do a group, she reached out to Coco, and they went through several girls before I joined the group. I, mm. I came, I was the last piece, and oh, uh, wow. of course, the best piece. I mean, I can't complain. But uh, <laughs> they called me later on, and, and we've just been together ever since. I guess we were the right combination. How old were you guys then? Lee was 17. I remember she couldn't even sign the first contract that we had, uh, wow. had received. She was 17, I was 19, and Coco was 20. Wow. Wow. Now, if there was something that you could change about your whole experience, is there anything that you would change? Girl, I mean, where can I begin? I would start at A and go all the way down to Z. <laughs> yeah, I always want to change something. I always want to change something. Um, uh, the biggest thing I think uh, we would have been more more cautious and choosing management mm -hmm. because I think the yeah, right manager lot. could either propel you or destroy mm -hmm. you, and unfortunately, we had one that wasn't very beneficial to us. Yeah. Okay. Because you guys, I mean, you still are, but during that time, it was just no group that could compare to you, no female group. Oh, wow. Well, and, yeah. Well, your voices were just wonderful in the blend, and mm -hmm. I mean... I was uh, teaching at the time, but uh, these, my co-hosts are a lot younger than me, and um, it's just, I just love Weak in the Knees, I could hardly, I, I mean, I, just, I love that song, I just, me too. I mean, we know, you, we know, and Tiffany, <laughs> Tiffany was SWV Junior, <laughs> and the thing about Tiffany, she was a drama student too, she happened to be oh, one cool. of mine before she decided to go. She went to Tennessee State in Nashville. I did. Mm -hmm. she, uh, she knows all about Nashville down there That's a lot. That's a big don't? school, yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you like Nashville? I absolutely love Nashville. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in Brooklyn. I've lived a couple different places, but Nashville has become my home. And I'm, I'm a converted country girl. I, I love it. I that a lot. Yeah. Oh, wow. oh wow! I like to hear that. <laughs> well, I need. I wanted to ask you this real quick. How does your husband and your son? How do they adapt to this reality mm -hmm. TV thing? Well, again, they were both in. I'm. Um, I married a baller, and my husband. He's on television every weekend. He 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 just. But he's done movies. He, he, our family is just used to this stuff. But, um, <laughs> especially being in Nashville with the Titans, he was on camera every time he stepped out of his car. <laughs> right. He adjusted really well. My youngest son, who's uh, primarily in the show, he's a mess. He thinks he's, he's famous. <laughs> oh, he does. Does he go to private or public school? Or? He goes to public school, yes. Right. My son gets on the bus every morning and he goes to school. That's awesome. He gets in trouble like every other kid. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, He's my goodness. Kid. So tell us what you have up for this weekend with the Trumpet Awards. Um, Trumpet Awards are, are Saturday. We're filming them Saturday, and SWV will be singing in the tribute to Gamble and Huff. Mm. They'll be honored this year, and we'll be um, singing to them doing 
oh God, what's the song we're doing? Um, if only you knew. They had written that song for Patti LaBelle, and uh, we're going to sing that. If part. Uh -uh. only <laughs> you knew. Oh, oh, I know that song. I love that song. Yeah, we did a, a did the cover on our last album, which was Grammy nominated. So it, wow, it's, uh, it's a great song. You can't deny it. So you were in California yesterday, mm -hmm. and how was the weather out there? Beautiful. It was 75 degrees and <laughs> sunny. Uh, I'm walking around in all those tank tops with those jackets. <laughs> wow. Cute. Get off the plane in Atlanta and it hurt. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's two degrees here. Ooh, That's the high. <laughs> right. Yes, 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 yes. So I don't know what's happening to this weather, but something is happening to it. So what's mm -hmm. up? Uh, so uh, you, you've done this one season of SUV, SWV. Why do I keep on saying SUV? I guess she got her new truck. Uh, I got a new truck, so, you know. But no, seriously, this is going to be on for six weeks. Mm-hmm. And well, then now four more weeks. Uh, two weeks have gone, and now we have four more weeks. Well, that's why I wanted you on, so I could let my audience mm -hmm. know to watch it every Thursday night mm -hmm. at, at, at 10, 10 p.m. 9 p.m. Central yes. on WeTV. Are you critical of yourself when you watch yourself on television? Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> and again, you don't see everything, so I feel like they took the, the parts yeah, that the I didn't want people to see. I cry every episode. <laughs> <laughs> I, I noticed that. Person, yeah. Like, gosh, I do more than just cry. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you seem to want to hold the group together. I mean, one thing I like about it is three different personalities. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's always been us. <laughs> and that makes for great television. It makes mm -hmm. for great television. <laughs> and what I love about this, this was not a group of women that people just put together. These, this yeah. is a group of women who've been around each other. And there's something about the dynamics of a singing group, period, be it male or female, don't you think? Mm-hmm, yeah. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, like I said, with us, it, this is not, this is not a three- or four-year thing. This is uh, 22 years of singing professionally and almost 10 years prior to that as friends. So we get on each other's nerves. Everybody's not going to love each other, oh, but, but right. we can't see ourselves singing with anybody else. I can't do this group without them, Even regardless of what people think. Coco's an amazing talent. She can't do it without us. Mm -hmm. We're all in this together, and, and we plan on staying together as long as we can hold it together physically. <laughs> what tickled me about Lily, she's trying to get her kids to move out the house. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that is something. She that, but she don't want her baby to go nowhere. <laughs> as soon as they decide to leave, she's like, call mommy. I know. Um, one more thing before you go, and I really appreciate this. Are you all touring or doing any mm -hmm. special concerts? Oh, yeah. We're always on the road. Um, we, we actually, we just finished in uh, Oklahoma and Shreveport. We had to go, we're doing a bunch of promotions this week for the show, but we have to go to New York to do uh, Madison Square Garden with Charlie Wilson on the oh, first. Oh, what good. Wow. That's a great show. Yeah, That's Charlie, last Coming name back. Wilson. Now, when, <laughs> yeah. say, when is that again? We may need to <laughs> do the show on the road. Yeah, yeah I got to do the show on the road. Well, I hope you get. We have to perform. I want to see Charlie Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that you uh, come to Detroit sometimes because you have a lot of fans here. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We've been to Detroit a couple times. Yeah. Oh, I this year. Well, last year. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I didn't mm -hmm. know. I'm going to keep up this time. I'm going to look on your mm -hmm. website and everything, and we'll just come down and interview everybody. So mm -hmm. we wish you all a great show. And when is the, when are they going to air this Trumpet Awards show? Do you know? I'm not sure. That I don't know. I'll find out, though. I'll keep you posted. Okay, okay. darling. And thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And thank continue. You. Thank you. It happened this Wednesdays, every Wednesday night at thir Thursday. Thursday, I mean, Thursday, night. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday night, night at 10 o'clock. Oh, I'm we sorry. Oh, we're, yeah. we're watching it here. After the Braxton's. So <laughs> bye-bye and have a great show. Okay, thanks. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. That was great. <laughs> wow, that was so okay. nice of her. Oh, that, was. that was so nice to call in and, mm -hmm. and tell us about a group. Have any of you ever been in a singing group or a little group of girls who <laughs> did something? I've been in a group. I sang background for Foreigner when I was in college. Did you? Yeah. Get out of here. I was yeah. in a, um, oh, I've been in a group. <laughs> no. Foreigner. Yes. It was 
Plus, I have to give you the background. I used to sing in the gospel choir in college. Mm -hmm. And Farner um, had, I want to know what love is. It was That's out. my the jam. Mm -hmm. And so they were doing a tour, and they were oh. trying to show college students what it was like to be on tour. So they did an audition on campus, and they only picked maybe about 14, 15 students. And it was like hundreds of us. So mm. I really didn't think that I was going to make it. But when I went to check the board, I was up there. So it was, it was a very exciting awesome. experience. So we had to practice and all that. So it got to the day of the concert. We sang, and I just had like a Diana Ross moment. Uh -oh. You know, the, everybody was <laughs> gone, and I was still out there waving and taking <laughs> it out. And they were like, oh get her on the set. Because I was like, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> And, that is and, then, hilarious. and, and oh it was God. just, it was a rush like <laughs> I had never felt before. Because it was thousands and thousands of people out there. Oh, and we I were to know what the love lights you is. got taken over. I got taken over. That is a great story. I was story. still out there. <laughs> so that was my moment. Yeah, I was just like, yes. <laughs> That is really one of my favorite songs. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I love that. Hilarious. I know, you didn't know I was a singer. <laughs> no, or Diana. Well, I know. So, <laughs> speaking of Cheryl, everybody, we have to congratulate her Yay! on her luncheon last week yes, with Mr. Great. Stephen A. Smith. He was mm -hmm. the keynote speaker, and as you know, Stephen A. called in to Table Talk, and we interviewed him here. So we're going to have as many of those as we can for you. We're trying to break out a little more regionally and so forth. Of course, keep the focus here in Detroit because a lot is happening, but there are a lot of things happening around the country and a lot of things that people need to know. And mm -hmm. we, are, we don't agree on everything, contrary to popular <laughs> demand, I've thought. Uh, also, a lot of people have been talking about uh, uh, Snyder, Governor Snyder, Snyder. He seeks 50, 5,000 visas mm -hmm. for immigrants. Do you all know about that? Yeah, I heard that story. And I personally think it's a great idea. Whatever it takes to entice people who um, are going to be contributing <laughs> individuals to the city of Detroit, I think it's a good plan. Just one of many things they need to do to just attract people who will be making income and can contribute to the tax base of the city. Well, some people are talking about the fact that um, what about the people in the city? You know, you're extending these visas and everything, wanting them to have training. But I, I think it helps with the diversity of the city. Absolutely. And then, like I said, this is just one of many factors. There are yeah. things available for people in the city as well. You know, there yeah. are all types of incentives. But one of the things that Snyder pointed out that I thought was uh, a very good point is that we have allow individuals from around the world to come in and get these great educations from and Louisville, leave. Michigan State, and then when they get the education, we say, okay, now get out. I mean, what sense what does sense that make? Does it make? It yeah. doesn't make sense at all. And I recently, on um, one of the NPR stations last week, they interviewed a guy who was in the country after his visa expired illegally for years, but he started a business and hired like 200 people, Americans, working these business, you know, paying into the tax revenue. So of course he was pro-immigration because he was an example of folks that come to this country and create jobs right, right, for other right, individuals. Right, right, right. Well, it's 5,000 the first year, 10,000 each of the next three years, and 15,000 the fifth year. So that's a lot of people who, mm -hmm. who would bring families and so forth. And he talked about the fact that there's a lot of housing in Detroit that could be. That's what I was gonna say. Yeah. Yes. Get like, them cheap housing. And, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know, I still say crime. <laughs> if yeah. they can just get a handle on crime, it would mm -hmm. really help. Now this week, Oakland County Executive mm -hmm. L. Brooks Patterson mm -hmm. criticized uh, Detroit in an article for the New Yorker, That's and it was an called understatement. No. <laughs> "Drop Dead Detroit." <laughs> and some people are demanding that he apologize. I could care less mm -hmm. if he apologized. This man has felt like this for. I was going to say mm -hmm. that this is not the first time that he's expressed how he truly felt. And he tried to clear it up and say that it was taken out of context. And so that the, said years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that the editor had an agenda when interviewing him. But this is not the first time that he's expressed his true feelings and how he feels about the city of Detroit. My interest is, and, you know, they'd reached out to see what 
Mike Duggan had to say or if he had a comment about it. And I haven't heard anything yeah. as of yet. I don't think he has. Well, he and Brenda Jones so-called made a statement together, but he hasn't been on camera making the statement. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. what did you think, uh, Cheryl, or anybody? About that this situation? Yeah, that's yeah it's just like she said. It's a, this is not surprising not coming new. from him. It was just like looking at like, wow, okay, yeah. tell us how you really feel. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't want an apology, though, because mm -hmm. it wouldn't be sincere. Exactly. Right. exactly. That's, I had an argument with a friend of my, well, one of the co-hosts, mm -hmm. Chris. Chris says that he should apologize because it's a show of respect. I said an insincere apology isn't a show of anything. I agree. Yeah. It's more disrespect than anything. I agree. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It reminds me of individuals that are caught in something, be it, you know, some scandal with their wives or other, you know, extra They're not sorry affairs. they did it, but and sorry then, they got caught. Yeah, but right. you come out, like when they come out with these apologies and the women are standing next, it's so insincere because, again, it's not the fact that you're apologetic. You're, you're uh, sorry that you got caught, that you are not able to do this behind closed um, curtains anymore. So I don't, you know, apology doesn't mean anything. It's it like an apology tour. Mm -hmm. The apology tour, <laughs> yes. Now, yesterday, there were a lot of headlines about J. Rue Campbell. Mm -hmm. He was yeah. the cast tech quarterback who body slammed, who slammed a security guard. Mm -hmm. Now, all of you, all of us went to high school. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen that? No. no and seeing never. that video hurt me. Yeah. He really that, slammed oh him down. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that was just. He really. But I think he has some anger management, and I'm sure that is not the first incident. No, no. Well, they talked really about it. They talked yeah. about it on the news that he he's suspended for the first half of his senior year playing, which hasn't even come about. So the 2014 football seasons, he's suspended not because of this incident, but because of something that happened punching. last fall, punching, punching another student, a um, student from the opposing team, mm -hmm. from an opposing team. Yeah. Well, the thing about it is I, I would feel bad for his parents seeing his, his picture all over the place, but they, some people, some st a student that they interviewed mm -hmm. said he has some anger issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but someone who plays on the football team, so this wasn't necessarily the media saying that, no. and I'm not saying what the student said is true, but there has to be something when you pick somebody up and just throw With them on the ground. that type of intensity. Yeah. You know, he could have broken that man's spine, his yes. back, he could have paralyzed this individual. Mm -hmm. When you look at this picture, it's horrific. Yeah. I'm just surprised that the security guard was able to you get looked up at as the quickly. Tape. You looked at the Yes. 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 I, I saw I, it. We all mm -hmm. saw it. I saw mm -hmm. a couple different angles, too, because there were several kids mm -hmm. that were taping, and they replayed it from a different angle where you could get a, a better view of what happened. And, there was a little pushing back and forth, and it, the comment was, you know, do you feel that the security officer was the aggressor in the situation? And honestly, from that other angle, it was up a little closer. It showed the student pushed this. They had exchanged words, mm -hmm. and then he pushed him. And when the man went to square up, the security guard went to square up with him, that's when the student picked him up and body slammed him. So, wow. you know, it, it goes back to bad behavior being rewarded or mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. being taken care of so that you won't get to this point because Absolutely. as was stated there have been several incidents with this young man and involving violent type of yeah. reactions and as one of the attorneys stated on, on Facebook last night you know when you know and I'm devil's advocate right now because I am mm -hmm. a defense attorney and there there are safeguards and things that are put in place and hopefully this young man will get the correct uh, assistance that he will need, as Cheryl said, with like anger management mm -hmm. and different types of situations, and that he'll truly take advantage of it because there's one thing to be a great athlete, but it's another thing to be coachable or to have the type of behavior to go along with it because as of right now, he is a great athlete, but he's also a liability. Yes. Yeah. Right. And, and, that, it's and not that liability it. is going to expand as he has more Definitely. resources and platform to expand yes. it on. So, you know, he's going to go on to the national level and, oh, my God, if he's not checked now, just yeah. imagine yeah. Yeah. The, the, what yeah. he could find himself into uh, during that time. So right. this is a time for his parents, family members, everyone who loves Friends, and cares everyone. for this guy to step up and hold him accountable yes. for his behaviors. And, and hopefully he won't lose out on this scholarship mm -hmm. to Michigan State. Well, you know, character character means a lot. And it's more trouble with an athlete who gets in trouble 
when you could have gotten someone maybe with a in less talent who yeah. doesn't get in yeah, trouble. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And with Michigan State having the high profile program that they yeah. have, they could get anyone. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They could get anyone. Also, in most school districts, code of conduct, a student is expelled. Definitely. Mm -hmm. For this type of yeah. behavior, yeah. I also talk. And you are 100% right. So it's going to be interesting to see how they handle mm -hmm. the situation because technically that is, from when I was teaching back in 2000, that is what was in the books at that time. Well, it's still in still. the books. Fr removed from the district, actually. Removed mm. from the district. Mm -hmm. Removed from the district. So if he's missing the first half of 2014 because of this prior incident, what does this incident do? Does right. he lo lose his whole senior year? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's really real. It, it's really a sad uh, it state is. of yes. affairs. Yes. And a lot of men are looking out to help this young man. And I saw that. And then Cliff Woodards, who's also a host here on TV 33 and an attorney, he asked the question, said, why are so many young men so angry? Mm -hmm. And I said, look at some of the people they admire, Kanye West, Chris Brown, both who have shown many angry outbursts. Yeah, but I think it starts. But yeah, yeah. But they I gotta do speak look up on that too now. They mm -hmm. do look at them. Yeah. So I understand that they look at them, but the problem is, even with those two examples that you've given, they had situations that have occurred with them being young men, and they were not properly addressed. Oh, I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, but, I but I know what you're saying, that it, it's almost become a culture where we accept it, and we have to stop that because, right. again, this young boy, he, uh, what if this guy could have been paralyzed, hurt, killed? Oh, God. Yeah. Then what? You know, he right. would be in prison for the rest, rest of, of his life. But just think mm -hmm. if you have a student, you have a child who goes to school with this young man, and this man young man if he has some anger issues could hurt a child mm -hmm. right i mean really i mean or it could be a bad bad fight so i, I do hope he gets help i hope things uh, happen that will teach i think he probably got a chance to cool down and maybe this can be one of those teachable moments hopefully sometimes oh. if he's held accountable if he's not held accountable for it then you're oftentimes it it's like you know you you're tough you know mm -hmm. we are creatures of habit so yeah. you know he'll learn that this is something I can it blows over and I can get away with it well Alan Iverson he graduated from high school the same year as my son and they all went to Nike camp and everything Alan Iverson was able to do anything he wanted to do mm -hmm. from high school on mm. and it it still went through the NBA he did all anything he wanted to do and you see what has happened in his yeah. life he yes. had a lot of people feeding off of him feeding off of his celebrity and feeding off of his money and now he has none. Mm, yeah. So it it's the parents responsibility, it's the teachers responsibility because when I taught athletes, I was always kind of hard on them. Mm -hmm. Oh, me too. Mhm. Mm me too. I had a parent call because I had a, a student athlete and he was sleeping in the back of my classroom and I had another young lady go down and get the basketball coach. And when the coach came in, I said, I just wanted you to see this and before I react. Mm -hmm. And he was suspended for a game. And everybody came back to me and like, oh, you got him suspended? Well, he didn't fall asleep in my class mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to, as Dr. Rose said, there has to be consequences to your actions. And I remember he said, you know, the next day in class, did you call my mom? Like, she got me before I walked through the door. I didn't know what's going on. <laughs> yes, I did. But he <laughs> turned out to be a great student. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, sometimes they, you need to have those teachable moments. And I believe that all adults in a student's life are to. teachers in a way. That's I want right. to go on to um, Na American Idol because I think we it should say something about that. They broadcast from Detroit, or the show mm -hmm. was done in Detroit the other day, and a lot of people criticized the fact that uh, they were on a different set. This was supposed to be at, uh, where's the Lions Stadium? What's the name of that? Ford Field. Ford Field, Ford Field mm -hmm. right. Well, they start off at Ford Field, and then they get callbacks and all of that stuff, and they ended up, I think, doing this last part at the Book Cadillac. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think so. Uh, mm -hmm. It was at the Book Cadillac. Anyway, a young lady, 15-year-old from Southfield High, Yay. she sang mm -hmm. Ain't No Way, and she uh, she made it. Great She's job. also in the marching band. Uh, Tiffany and I, we oh. applaud all that. <laughs> um, but also, there were a lot of other talented people that they showed. They showed a lot less of the people 
who didn't have any time yeah, this they, time. this, this they season, did. they're not doing that. You know, when yeah. I sat down last week, my daughter and I to watch it, and we're waiting for, okay, who's going to be the biggest buffoon <laughs> this season? And there were, there were absolutely none in that particular um, in the season premiere of it. So, but it was great. And I think that has to do with, even though American Idol is known for that, there's a lot of competing shows out That's here right, that yes. have right. great talent. Well, they're trying yes. to lift up mm -hmm. their ratings now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they showed uh, the, the young man who had the dreadlocks, who had the four kids or whatever. He was a great singer. In fact, they had a lot of yeah. great singers mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. I didn't understand the twins. Did any of you see I the twins? See when no. they chose one and not the other? No, they had twin girls on and they sang, but the, they were off key a lot. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I just said, did they, uh, did they give them tickets? No. No, okay, good. Okay, good. Seriously, it's no, questionable. And then one young man was kind of uh, rude to Jennifer. Not rude, said a kind of snide mm -hmm. remark uh, of a maybe a little sexual in innuendo because she was trying to fix something on her shirt mm. and everything. So uh, I, I applaud all the singers, all the singers who got accepted. And that's really, really exciting. I hope at least one or two of them get in that top ten. That would be exciting. That would be great. Awesome. Exciting. Be great. Because Detroit has enormous talent. Mm -hmm. They have mm -hmm. a lot of talented people. Yeah. And when that young lady, with I think she had braces. Yes, yeah, she 15 did. Fifteen years old, mm -hmm. saying, "Ain't no way." I said, "Come on." <laughs> I mean, it, uh, to do something, not use something like Beyonce's uh -huh. song or right. something like that, mm -hmm. but something more classic classic and get out there ain't mm -hmm. no way written by carol king well i have to share because i saw my daughter perform for the first time I saw oh, on <laughs> stage. and i tell you i was a mother in the audience with my heart being so fast and it just i can't contain myself it was just so exciting seeing that look at the <laughs> video on facebook gabby was wonderful and she was up there singing by herself mm -hmm. and she was shaking her leg and, <laughs> and it chose the song i didn't know i had never heard the song myself before so she chose a song that again wasn't a one of the typical songs mm -hmm. but I'm proud of her yeah so it's great to see all this Detroit talent just I really know. being highlighted I know. now did you hear that Bill Cosby might have a new sitcom coming up <laughs> I heard it on Wendy Williams and I laughed because you know I love Wendy Williams she was she asked her audience you know, what did they think? And did they think that he should, you know, start a new sitcom? And it was like maybe five or six people that clapped. And she was like, exactly. I love when my audience agrees with me. Sit down, Mr. Cosby. <laughs> I, I agree. I, he hasn't even been funny in these last few oh years. Oh, my gosh. Last 10, 15 years, people, I have run into people of both black, white, mm -hmm. who clamored to go see him mm -hmm. when he appears. I think he was over in Windsor one time. And yeah, I, I mean, he, he comes mm -hmm. here and... This, this couple, I don't know, we saw him in a restaurant. They said he wasn't funny. Oh, wow. Yeah. They said he, he, they were like so disappointed because everyone expects the Cosby yeah. show. Yeah. 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 But I will say this, I do enjoy hearing him speak about different things going on in the community yeah. and, and things like that. I think he has a lot yeah. to say and people will listen to him, but as far as being a comedian. Yeah, yeah. people are listening, but they sure do get upset yeah. with him because he tells it just like he, he does. Tells and that's what we need. Juju. We need yes. more. We need that hard talk Absolutely. because I mean, I have I've had students who didn't have lunch money but had a two hundred dollar mm -hmm. pair of mm -hmm. uh, oh, gym yeah. shoes on. And it's so funny be, that you said that because there's a picture of Bill Cosby and the caption says, you mean to tell me you have uh, Louboutin Ch heels yeah. on but you didn't have any money for church? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. What do you think that is in our, well, it's in a lot of cultures. It's consumerism. <laughs> We're just it, caught up in that, you know, aspirational lifestyle there's a psychology to it also because for so long we didn't have those things that we attach self-worth to that um, not so, knowing that yeah. these things have no value yes. even cars depreciate as soon as you drive them off the lot right. but i know that's mm -hmm. what we put our value in. yeah so our value and self-worth are, are on material, material things as opposed to mm -hmm. um, aesthetics or higher education or travel experience things of that sort and sacrifice mm -hmm. yeah and right. sacrifice a lot of times we don't want to sacrifice and fastest hour in television is up. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, we didn't get to We're everything. Not done. <laughs> I mean, I know we had so much to talk about, but Taj, she did Great call interview. in yeah. and everything, and I was real excited about it. And Lady Cheryl, 
Dr. Rose, Tiffany, thank you all so much for thank coming you. in and doing our thing. We're going to be doing a restaurant real soon, and we're going to do Grill Midtown, I do believe. So I'm real excited about that. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a lot of surprises in store for you. So we'll see you next re week on Table Talk with Brenda Perryman at 1 p.m. Tell your friends. Stay like warm. us on Facebook. <laughs> That's right. Like us.